And that allows me to be at the right place at the right time to meet the right people to do the right deal. And I think that that uh, has leveraged opportunity into my life by the 2080 rule. Today, we're going to talk about a principle that originates from an economist named Valvedo Pareto that was written about by a management specialist, Joseph Duran. He lived over 100 years in age and was still lecturing at Liberty to the very end. And he was in management control, government of management and business mainly. But his, his observation, from his studies of economics, led him to realize the significance of this 80-20 rule. Now, sometimes it's called the 90-10 rule, the 75-25 rule, but the 80-20 rule seems to be most popular in the terminology. Basically showing that 20% um, of what you do gives you 80% of the results and 80% of what you do gives you 20% results. And this is uh, leads to a principle that is in physics that applies to physics in life and that is that if you don't fill your day with high priority actions that inspire you your day will fill up with low priority distractions that don't the higher the priority that you fill it with the more profound the impact and accomplishments you have so if you fill it with low priority things the 20 percent of the priorities you'll get to you know the the well the higher priority things, the 20% that gives you the most results, you'll get more results than if you fill it and scatter yourself with 80%, it gives you 20% results. So this has a very wide application and I'd like to have you maybe pick, take a piece of paper out, maybe write it or get your notepad or iPad or whatever you're gonna write notes on. <clears throat> and let's take a look and go down the, the rabbit hole with it. In business, we'll start with business. There's seven areas of life spiritual, mental, vocational, financial, family, social, and physical. We're going to start in the vocational business area first. That's where this principle was most noted originally by Joseph Turin. That if you stop and ask yourself, what is the highest priority action that I can do today that can give me the greatest results? If you never stop and reflect, you may just scatter your life with unexpected, out extrinsically driven expectations and duties from other people. But if you never take the time to do that, you're holding yourself back from achievement and breaking through plateaus and barriers. But the, what, are the, what is the highest priority action, the 20% of what all the things that I do that gives me 80% results, give me most of the results? Now, I first implemented this. Uh, really way back um, when I was 27, I, I literally made an effort by reading a book called The Time Trap by Alan McKenzie, because I realized I was doing a lot of stuff in my clinic at the time, and I realized that I was spending a whole lot of time doing kind of low-priority things and wasn't getting as much productivity out of myself as I could. So I read this book, The Time Trap, and I literally saw all my pitfalls of delegating and all the reasons why I was holding myself back I thought, well, by the time I gave it to somebody, I could have done it. Well, if I give it to them, they may not do it the way I want it, and then I got to do it again. Well, I always have to go over it again, and then uh, and, and then I rob them of accountability, and then I end up rescuing them. And then I end up, uh, you know, I, I, by the time I train them, I could have just done it. All these different excuses. And I realized I was holding myself back trying to do everything. So I got a list of everything that I did in a day. And I categorized it based on professional and personal. And I made an exhaustive list, not vague, broad generalities like marketing or sales. That's too broad. But the actual actions, making calls, doing inventory, studying it, asking questions. I, I broke it down into the details of what I did in a day. And then I asked myself, after I made this exhaustive list, how much does it produce per hour? And I extrapolated the best I could estimating it because some things seem to be getting zero and some getting more money. And, and I looked at what it actually did and what it produced per hour to then make that as I put the dollar per hour and extrapolated it. Uh, if I made uh, $200 an hour out of it, I put it down. If I made $400 an hour, I put it down. If I did 
a half hour, but I made $400 and I made $800. I put it down, I extrapolated it. And then I prioritized it to make it look at what is the most important thing I can do to produce the most. And my productivity was basically a reflection of what I was doing that served people. Because if they're paying for it, then I'm obviously filling some need. Then I made another column next to that column and I made a list of what meaning it had on a one to 10 scale. And I prioritized the meaning on a one to 10. 10 meaning it's extremely meaningful and inspiring. And I was enthused and inspired spontaneously to do it. And the other, the lower meaning down to ones or things I had to be motivated or extrinsically driven to do. I didn't want to do it. I'd procrastinate, hesitate, frustrate. I noticed I was doing narratives, but I, I was delaying them. I was procrastinating them. But when I was interacting with the clients, I was engaged in it. and I was doing it spontaneously. So I basically made a list of all the things based on one to 10 scale on how engaging it was, inspiring it was, how much meaning it had. And then I prioritized that. Then I took those two together and I prioritized that to look at what was most meaningful and most productive. And I did a summarized priority list out of that. And I found that there were about five things and really two things that were the most important thing I can do. If I do that, I'm going to produce the most and have the most energy because when you're doing things high in your values, your energy goes up. And I narrowed it down to that. And I realized that really 20% of the 20% of the 20%, if I do even that or 20% of that, and to get to the very highest part of thing, I actually produce the most income, serve the most people, and have the most inspirational energy. And I did that, and wow, that made my business go up and expand and allowed me to have more income to delegate. If you're not delegating lower priority things to other people, you're going to be trapped. And this is what the Time Trap book was about, about liberating yourself from doing low priority things because every time you do low priority things you devalue yourself every time you do the highest priority things the most meaningful and productive and inspiring and uh you know income generating that serve the most people you get the most vitality out of it and so from a business perspective you want to do that you want to look at what you're saying to the client um what you're selling to the client what you're doing as far as uh, the job duties, making sure you get to the 20% of the 20% of the 20% of the job duties, making sure you narrow down what clients you work with, make sure you look at what the products you're selling. Everything can be prioritized by this 20% of what you do gives you 80% of your results and 20% of that gives you another 80% results. And you can compound this by narrowing it down into the highest priority thing until you get to what Gary Keller calls the one thing that you're masterful at. Now, I'm, I'm a, I research, write, travel, teach. My highest priority thing, the number one thing I do is teach. The second thing is research and write and travel. And today, I'm getting to do all that. I've been researching, writing throughout the day. I'm traveling right now through the Mediterranean, and I'm actually teaching now. So I get to do what I love, those top four things every day that gives me the 80% results. And that really liberates you by getting to do what you're inspired to do on a daily basis. And then, of course, when it comes to socializing, you may want to ask yourself the 2080 law there. You know, who are you hanging out with? Uh, many years ago, my, my wife, when she was alive, we um, were living on East 64th uh, in New York City, East 64th Street. And um, we had decided that it was a little noisy there because we were right there going into the park and you could hear the honking horns half the time. And we we're on the fifth floor of a big brownstone. And... Uh, had a great neighbors, great environment, fantastic people on the street, but a little noisy. And so we asked ourselves, what is the highest priority place we could actually go in New York that's quietest? And also that would position us with the, the highest profile, highest uh, income, highest uh, leveraging factor we could. And we looked and we, we went around and we finally realized that Trump Tower was probably the best positioning we could get because we realize that 20% of the people that have the most influence are right there in that building. And um, now I don't know what today is because after Donald's been president, it might've changed, but in those days it was, you know, 20 something years ago, um, it was that way. So uh, we noticed that the second we moved in and started to associate with uh, people that had a higher net worth, higher social influence, higher celebrity status, um, higher uh, corporate influence, et cetera, we noticed that our business, our influence, our wealth all went up that year. Uh, we also, when I moved on to the ship, the world, I, the same thing happened. So if we don't empower ourselves in business, we're going to be told what to do. If we don't empower ourselves in, 
in financially to what we're worth. We don't empower ourselves in relationship and start having a loving and intimate relationships there. We'll be doing honeydew, low priority things that we get frustrated by and alienate our own spouse with. If we don't empower ourselves socially, we'll be told what to do by people that are overpowering us and get into the so the so-called conspiracy world, fearing that the world's going to control you. But if you go in 20 of the 20% of it gives you 80% results of the people you hang out with, that also has a massive impact. Uh, I made a goal many, many years ago that I wanted to have an influence, and I made a list of some people that had global influence. Anybody that had global influence, I wanted to meet and interact with and associate with and interview and, and learn and having classes and associate in some way with. I made a list of them, and I met all those people, and I made a bigger list. Now it's over 3,000 people that have global influence because I've made that a target, and that allows me to be at the right place at the right time to meet the right people to do the right deal. And I think that that uh, has leveraged opportunity into my life by the 2080 rule. So you might think about the 20 2080 out of application in your social network. Who do you hang out with? Who are you going? Most people prefer to hang out with people that have a bigger influence than people that have a smaller influence. Well, as you climb up the game, you can do that. Now, it's not that anybody there is not a magnificent individual. It's just that you're going to now use your time most effectively. And if you don't fill your day with the highest priority individuals in your life, it may fill up with low priority distracting people, opportunists that want to take advantage of yours. So that's the lesson in life. Again, if you don't fill your day with high priority actions that inspire you, it fills up with low priority distractions that don't. And physically, 20% of what you eat gives you 80% of the energy. I, I'm amazed at some of the stuff that people eat, they put in their mouth, and it's not food. They're living to eat because they want sweets and fats, and they're letting, they're letting the outer influence and sales and gimmicks and and unhealthy foods get into their consciousness instead of actually prioritizing what they eat, prioritizing their exercise program. 20% of what they do gives them the most return on their physical um, tone and, and fitness. And 20% of what they eat gives them most of their results. You know, I'm a very, uh, very focused individual when it comes to the eating process. And I drink and eat and consume things that are the highest performing, highest priority actions that I find for myself. And you can do an inventory on yourself like Gandhi did when he was around and do an evaluation of what works and what doesn't work for you on a daily basis and narrow it down to the 20% that gives you 80% results. What are the foods that you love that are most nutritious, that give you the most vitality and the most wellness quotient and get the 2080 rule? The same thing on the activities. You know, if you go and do the physical activities that give you the most results, sometimes Pilates may be that. It may be jogging or maybe walking up hills. Uh, whatever it may be that allows you to maximize your tone and fitness. And the same thing, you want to make sure that you, when you consume it, you're eating 20% of the foods that have the most fiber and the most to help your microbiome. And uh, you stop and eat. What's priority to eat? Are you literally living to eat or are you eating to live? I'd rather eat to live and prioritize what I'm putting in my body and prioritize what I put into my activity, prioritize what I drink, prioritize what I feed my mind as far as uh, things that are distressful. I don't sit and watch the distressing stuff on the news. I, I find that that's distracting. I learned that from Gandhi when I was 18. So I just said, that's it. The only time I watch TV is when I'm on it usually, because I don't find that that is the most productive. That's sensational, extreme, volatile, polarizing, impulse, instinct, distracting type of information. So you want to fill your life socially and physically, nutritionally with quality information. I'd rather feed my mind with information that's going to increase the probability of me making a difference in the world and fulfilling my mission. See, if you go on my website and do the value determination process and find out what's highest on your value, where your, your value uh, is your telos, the end in mind, the chief aim, the primary objective, the real purpose and mission in life, and you ask yourself, <clears throat> what is the highest priority actions in each of these seven areas of life that will help me fulfill that mission? You will change your life. This is a very powerful principle, this 2080 rule. And so you can do that in every aspect of your health. I mean, the supplements you're taking, the food that you're consuming, the waters and drinks that you're drinking, the vegetable juices you're drinking. I and mean, if you're not putting in quality food, don't expect quality outcomes. If you're not putting quality people, don't expect quality outcomes. The same thing in business, 2080, 2080 in business, like I said. Now, when it comes to spirituality, the, you can also do it in spirituality. 20% of what you do gives you 80% of results of spirituality. 
my personal feeling is that if I make a list of everything that I got to do in a day, which I do it religiously every night, and I ask what is it, I had the opportunity to do it and put it as a gratitude journal, as a gratitude list, and make sure I don't go to bed without thinking about what happened and what I was able to do and what I'm grateful for for the other day, then I can see that 20% of whatever I do, that one exercise gives me 80% results as far as grace in my day. Spirituality, you want to feed your mind with the greatest ideas. I'm working on a new book, a new program I'm about to present on philosophers throughout the ages, philosophical thinking from the greatest minds who ever lived. I, I would much rather fill my mind with inspiring pieces of work. The Vyasa from the Vedanta and the, the uh, great teachings of the India, or maybe some of the great philosophers, or maybe some of the religious leaders. I'd rather fill my mind with something that inspires me and, and focus on what I can do, the 20% the that I can do that inspires me, that's deeply meaningful to me on a daily basis, and I get a result with that. If I do that, amazing things start to happen in my life. Whenever you're living by highest priority, you build momentum that becomes unstoppable. You expand your space and time horizons. You automatically think, gave more confidence and certainty. Wake up natural born leadership, more draw magnetism to you because people want to be around people that are exemplifying leadership and power. And if you go and do that, you automatically will be an inspired life and you'll leave it more of a legacy in life and wake up as Heraclitus described as the immortality factor inside you. Leave a mark in life. Why not? I always say we are, we're immortal souls. Why don't we set immortal goals, goals that go beyond our life that we can work on and ask how is whatever's happening in these seven areas of life helping me get there? And when it comes to the intellectual pursuits, the same thing occurs. You want to ask yourself and feed yourself, what is the, the thing you want to feed your mind with? Not just socially, but nutritionally, but also spiritually. In all areas, what is the highest priority information? You know, I teach a class called the Prophecy One Experience to be a prophet of your own destiny, a wise prophet of your own destiny. Take command of your destiny, live by design, not duty. The same thing when I do the Breakthrough Experience. Everything, every course that I teach around the world is designed to help people master the seven areas of their life because I believe that you're here to master your life. And that 2080 law is one of the keys to it. If you fill your, your mind with the greatest ideas from the greatest minds who ever lived that stood the test of time with the most probable information. When I was uh, 18 years old, I wanted to study universal laws. So I looked up universal laws and it led me to Aristotle and natural laws. That led me to the logos that predated uh, Christianity and led into Christianity from Heraclitus. And that led me to the idea of ologies, the various disciplines. So I made a list of all the disciplines that a person could study. And I made a goal to read 100 books on each of those disciplines, 299 of them now. And as a result of it, I then wanted to find the most common universal principles that stood the test of time in every one of those disciplines to feed my mind with the most universal, probable foundation of knowledge that I could build a foundation of life with. That was the 20% of the 20% of the 20% of the information that I could devour. And put, put and build a, a whole model of life around that. So I basically found out that if I fill my day that way, man, amazing things happen. I found out it didn't need as much sleep. I found out I had more vitality. I fed my mind things that kept being inspired to me. I asked whatever I was reading, how is it helping me fulfill my mission? And I got really inspired by that. And that I increased retention. I knew that if I took the 20% of whatever I learned is probably conscious and 80% of it was probably unconscious. And then when I linked was well, something did something that was in requiring that other unconscious information, when I was doing something that was purposeful, up came the unconscious. But I basically focused on the 20% of what I was reading and filling my mind with it. I used to select it. I, I realized that the average person may read one book a week or maybe one book a month or something like that. I used to read many books in a day four to seven in a, each morning. And in the process of doing it, I would ask myself, okay, I only have so many thousands of books I'm going to read in my life. What's the highest priority piece of literature I want to put in my mind? And I found out that if I target what it is that I want to feed my mind with by the greatest ideas, by the greatest minds who ever lived in each of the seven areas of life, the greatest business leaders, the greatest financial leaders, the greatest uh, relationship leaders, the greatest uh, social leaders, the greatest health and fitness leaders, the greatest spiritual leaders, the greatest intellectual pursuits, the great Nobel Prize winners, the great thinkers and philosophers, the, the great contributors and innovators. If I surround myself with the 20% of those people that made the biggest difference in the world and feed my mind that on a daily basis, my life changed. Well, I'm blessed today because I did that 2080 rule.
So I just want to take the time to talk about the 2080 rule that Velvedo Pareto in his economics talked about. And uh, you'll see this in every aspect of your life, if you think. So you can just meditate on that tonight and just contemplate that. And maybe you can prioritize these areas because it sure sa it saved me a lot of aggravation in life. And it helped me get more in the flow and give to do what I love and delegate and make sure you delegate everything. And that leads me to what I want to give you here. Uh, I've been doing the delegation process since 27, uh, since I opened up my practice many years ago. And I want to share this little gift with you. It's I want you to download this daily delegation form. It's the same form that I used all these years. And it's a step-by-step -step process to get things off your plate so you can get to the 20% that gives you 80% results and get to the 20% of that and give you 80% results again. And keep doing that until you're doing the one thing that you love doing and delegating the rest away and giving job opportunities to other people who would love to do the things you want to delegate and help the economy. Every time you help the economy and do the highest priority things, you just help everyone in the thing. And you can't make a difference in other people's lives and those opportunities without rewarding yourself. If you help other people get what they want to get in life, you get what you want to get. By delegating, you free people up to do what they love so you get to do what you love. And that liberates you from a lot of bondage and a lot of aggravation, a lot of frustration. Again, if you don't fill your day with the high actions that inspire you, your day is going to fill up with low priority distractions that don't. And think, think about that in all seven areas of your life. And thank you for being with me on this little weekly uh, thing. If you know somebody that could have benefited by hearing that, if that went in your mind today, I wish so-and-so could have heard that, please contact them. Pass this copy down onto them and, and uh, let them get access. Let them know about our weekly programs. Every week I try to give something, a little gem that can help you do something extraordinary with your life. You know, you deserve to do something amazing in your life. It's our real nature. We're, we're not here to, to live in mediocrity. We're here to do something extraordinary. Now, when I ask people around the world, how many of you want to make a difference in the world? Everybody puts their hand up. You are to make a difference. And the only way to make a difference is to be authentic. Everything and everything that's going on in your life is attempting to get you to be authentic where you are on the highest priority individual you not the personas and masks that you get to wear when you're trying to scatter yourself into low priority things. So magnificent who you are, that's where you want to focus on. Prioritize it, 2080, Dr. Martini. see you time, this time next week.